Good morning, and welcome to worship. It is so good to see all of you here this morning. Just a few quick words of announcement before we begin our time together. I'll invite everyone to pull out your green announcement sheet because this has everything you need to know on here. Well, not everything, but close to it, at least around here. Uh, first off, I hope everyone brought some painting clothes because we need your help to paint the hallway today. Uh, so hopefully you did. If not, run home, grab some clothes and help us paint. Or if you're bold enough, you can paint in your church clothes, whatever you'd like to do there. Uh, as we always like to say, the more people we have, the faster this goes. And you can just have a little section of the hallway. We really need your help to get this done. So please plan to stick around uh, to help us finish up the hallway, which means then carpet is supposed to be scheduled to come in this coming week. Fingers crossed. Uh, and then we'll be needing your help again to just move the furniture back into the places and spaces it needs to be. So thank you for all your help. And we're hoping that our King of Glory construction zone is almost over, which will be very good. Also after worship, uh, for those who are not painting, if you are one of our kiddos, we still have Sunday school. We also have confirmation and also a high school ministry event as well. And all of those locations are in your green announcement bulletin if you need to know where to go. Also, a couple of things to save the date. We are doing our annual trunk or treat on Saturday, October 28th from two to four. We are in need of both your candy donations. There's a bin right out in the, by the front office, as well as your time donation of volunteering your automobile trunk for trunk or treat. This is super easy and it's really awesome because you get to bring joy and happiness to kiddos as they walk around and trick or treat because you know they love candy. Well, I like candy too, but you know, it's always good. Uh, and we need your help. We wanna pack our West parking lot with vehicles as we serve the community in this really amazing outreach event. So please sign up and you, can, you know the easiest way to sign up just tell me. All you have to do in line is say, hey, sign me up for Trunk or Treat and I'll get you signed up. And also, like I said, we still do need a lot of candy donations to help this event be a success. And then also on Saturday, October 28th, right after Trunk or Treat, does anybody remember what we're doing? Reformation celebration from starting at four o'clock, probably until six. So you can head straight from Trunk or Treat right to dinner, see how that works as we'll have a big old party for Reformation. And then following that on Sunday, October 29th, is not only Reformation, but also the rite of confirmation for several of our young people. A big jam-packed weekend full of awesome stuff, but please mark your calendar to be here. And also this weekend, we continue our Seeds of Faith stewardship campaign and continue to invite our community into prayerful contemplation how God is continuing to invite us to be the generous, loving, caring people of God that we are for the sake of the life of the world. So those are all of our announcements this morning, and now I'll invite us to prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our musical meditation. Please stand for our confession and opening prayer. Our lives are often marked by merriment, but beneath that looms the other, our worry, our sorrow, our shame, our guilt, our grief. Let us hand over all that to the one who offers us not condemnation, but joy. In this moment, as my mind wanders, God, redirect my thoughts to you. In this week, 
as I walk your path and sometimes stumble, God, make your way clear. In our communities where we have sometimes remained silent, God, open our lips to speak for justice. In this world where there is much hurt, hurt that we sometimes cause, God, make us agents of healing. In this time when there is much sorrow and grief, God, send us out to be ambassadors of hope and joy. In these moments of silence, God, hear our prayers. Friends, this is the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And we are not only forgiven, we are also freed. Let us greet the world as people made new in Christ. Our gathering song is our theme for stewardship, number 689 in your red hymnal, 689, praise and thanksgiving. Praise and thanksgiving, God, we would offer for all things living you have made good. Harvest of sown fields, fruit of the orchard, hay from the mown fields, blossom and wood. God bless the land. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Our God, heavenly King, almighty Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And kiddos, come on up for a sermon for all of God's kids. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we're making our way. Is everybody just a little tired today? I, I, I am. I'm kind of getting the feeling. It's all right. We're good. We'll all be that together. Okay. So as always, I open with a question. Here's my question. Have you all ever borrowed something from someone before? Raise your hand if you've ever borrowed something. Anything. What kind of stuff have you, Samantha Molly, what have you all borrowed before? Her clothes. Her clothes. They're both like clothes. Okay, yeah. All right. Have you borrowed anything? What have you borrowed? Think on it. Have you borrowed anything? Um, like Lego, Lego pieces? pieces? So Lego pieces get borrowed at our house. Have you ever had to borrow anything before? You don't think so? Well, think on it. Anybody out here, have you ever had to borrow something from someone? Raise your hand. Everybody, right? We, we do. So what happens when you borrow something that's not yours? What do you have to do, Molly? You have to ask, right? And say, please. Please and thank you. Good manners, right? Oh, did you think of your thing? No, no that's okay. So let's say I borrow a Lego set from one of you, but I destroy it. I take it apart. And then I try to put it back together, but I put all of the pieces in the wrong place. And then I return it back to you. How would you feel? Mad. Mad. Uh-huh. Yeah, you'd be pretty mad at me. Chances are, would you let me borrow the Lego set again? No. Probably not, right? Because you're going to spend a lot of time rebuilding it. Or let's say I said, oh, I love your jacket. Can I borrow it? And you're like, sure. And I borrow it and I return it and it's got a big, like it's got a hole in it and it's missing a button and it's got a stain. How would you feel about that? Very sad. Would you let me borrow your jacket again? No. No. Okay. Here in a minute, we're gonna hear a parable from Jesus about a group of people who got to borrow something, but they didn't share and they didn't give out of, it was a vineyard. You know what vineyards produce? Grapes, right? And what do they do back in, what do we do with grapes? We eat them and what do we, there's a drink that's made with it, wine, right? Which is a big economy for grape juice. You can do that too, yep. And, and the people that were given this vineyard don't actually share the fruits and the bounty and the produce of it with the owner. They want to keep it for themselves. And, and that was just a very kind of uncomfortable situation because it asks the question, what belongs to us? Does everything you have belong to you? No. Where does it come from? God, everything. God, right? Hey, buddy, let's not play with that. Even what about your time? Does your time belong to you? Hello. Sweetie, sweetie. Does your time below? Yes, the tiny microphone is working. So just, there you go. Yeah, sorry, pastor's kid, it happens. Um, right, does your time belong to you? No, it's a gift from who? God. What about the gifts? Did you know that each of you has a special gift and something that you get to share with the world? Does that come from you or does that come from God? God. What about the resources that we have, like the food and our house and the money that we have? Where does that all come from? God, right? And we're, God has given it to us for what reason? Are we supposed to keep it or, or return just a smidge of it? What are we supposed to do with it? Share it and be generous. Wow, they just preached my sermon. I don't need to preach a sermon today. You got it. Be generous with everything, our time, our gifts, our resources, so that why? Why do we share and why are we generous, my friends? So we can share God's love and life because there's people in our world that are hurting and God needs you and you and you and you and you and all of us sharing what we have generously so that everyone can experience God's love. I think that's a pretty good cause, don't you think? All right. How about everybody take your hands like this and let us pray. Dear God, thank you because everything we have is a gift from you. Help us to be generous so that everyone 
may experience your love and life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. You can head back to your seats. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice voice, with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah and his pleasant, are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Philippians. Paul writes, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of the Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings become, by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory, Glory to you, to you, you Lord. O Lord. Jesus said to the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, 
and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Another day, another parable, and another vineyard. Here we are again, two weeks in a row in Matthew's gospel. And I don't know about you, but the first time and the second time and the third time I read through this gospel reading, I was left with a lot more questions than answers. So I love this word wonder. I'm going to invite you into my wondering. Can we do that this morning together? Because I feel like we've entered this conversation midstream. Remember last week, the religious authorities asked Jesus, by what authority are you doing all of these things? And then Jesus launched into a parable about a vineyard, and now we get another parable about a vineyard. So I'm like, where, where are we in the dialogue? And, and where does the owner go? Does anybody want to know, like, where does the, uh, what country is the owner going to? And did he know the tenants before he leased out his vineyard to him? Where did he find these people? And why do they want to keep everything to themselves? And why is this parable really violent? and brutal and and why is jesus even saying any of these things welcome to where i am this is a hard one you know i i wish we'd go back to the days when you know there's a couple of parables where jesus like spells it out and he's like this person is this and this person is that it's like great where do i fit into this where, where am i as a follower of jesus in the 21st century where do i find myself in this parable so what was helpful for me this week is I, I took a step back and I just read the parable for what it was. I kind of took it out of its context of Jesus talking with the religious officials back and forth and just read the parable for what it was. And I had an aha moment, Ooh, a light bulb moment. So the story goes like this. There's an owner who owns a vineyard and he leaves. And what does he do? Do you remember what he does, church? He rents it out to who? Tenants. And what are the tenants supposed to do? Take care of the vineyard while he's gone, right? So presumably that's what they do. And when the harvest time comes, the owner sends a group of his servants to go collect the produce, to go collect the bounty, to collect the yield of this vineyard. And what happens? The tenants take the servants. I think it says that they beat one, they stone one, and they kill another. Well, that escalated quickly. I wasn't expecting that to happen, okay? So then the owner sends more servants, and what happens, church? The same thing happens, okay? So then the third time around, the owner of the vineyard says, okay, well, 
they haven't listened to my servants. In fact, they've like brutally murdered my servants. So they're going to listen to my son. This time I'll send my son and they'll listen to my son. Did the tenants listen to the son? No. In fact, it gets worse. This time the tenants say, oh, here's the heir. Not only do we want to keep the bounty and the yield and the produce of the vineyard to ourselves, we also want to murder the heir because we want his inheritance. Okay, so then Jesus turns around to the group that he's talking to and says, what should the owner do? And they say, well, he should murder all of the tenants, take the vineyard, and rent it out to tenants who will give him the produce and the yield and the bounty at the appropriate time. Okay, I could just say amen and sit down and let you all figure it out. How does that sound? This is just a, a hard one. And, and, I, and I get it, it's a parable. And oftentimes in parables, Jesus and others that told parables would use very exaggerated language in order to get their point across. But here is the aha moment that I had. But kind of the, the, the point of this parable, I think, the, the tenants are doing a fine job at keeping the vineyard. They're doing a great job because obviously there's a bounty, there's a yield, something has been produced that the owner needs to collect. What's the issue here, church? Does anybody know what the issue is? They won't give the owner what is rightfully his. That's the issue. They want to keep the harvest to themselves. They want to hoard the harvest for themselves. They think it belongs to them. They want to keep it instead of giving it back to the owner who rightfully owns all of that. That's, that's the issue at the heart of all of this. So when I had that kind of aha moment, here's the little trail I went down. I thought to myself, okay, well, me and you, all of us, are all workers in the kingdom of God. We're all workers in God's vineyard. Remember last week we heard from Pastor Dana about how there's joy in the vineyard? So today I wanna to ask you this question. How are you doing at that? How are we doing at that? And not just tending to the vineyard, but more importantly, sharing the bounty and the yield and the produce of the vineyard with all people. How are you doing at that? And I'm just gonna put it there. This is a rhetorical question, something for you to think about. Because I think we, like I talked with our kids, right? We oftentimes walk around thinking, well, my time and my talent and my treasures are for me and me alone. And we live in a world that reinforces this idea. For one, we live in a culture that has bought into the lie of scarcity. You know what I mean when I say that? They say, there's not enough to go around. You got to be really careful with how much time and talents and treasure you share because there may not be enough for you. So hoard it like, the, like the, the tenants did. But church, we all know in God's economy, that's not how it works. I don't know about you, but I found that the more generous I am, the more caring I am, the more loving I am, God takes that and multiplies it out into the world. And in fact, I receive more than I've ever given away. Have you ever had an experience like that in God's economy? It's topsy-turvy. But the other thing in our culture that really encourages us to keep everything to ourselves is we live in the sense of, well, I worked hard for it. I earned it. It all belongs to me. Just like those tenants wanted to keep it. This is, the, generosity is hard, church. I haven't figured it out. If anyone out here has ever figured it out, please let me know. Right? It's always a spiritual practice and a challenge to be invited into this, but it's always amazing to see what God does in and through that. The things that we have, our time, our talents, our treasure, they don't belong to me. They don't belong to you. They're all sheer gifts of God's grace. God is calling and inviting us to take the yield, to take the bounty, to take the produce of our efforts in the kingdom, in the vineyard, and to take those and abundantly share them with the world so that everyone has what they need to thrive and to be whole and to be well. 
And when I get into these places where I don't feel very generous, you ever felt like that before? It's okay if you have, I have. I wanna keep it to myself. I'm reminded that God, the good news, still loves me just the way I am and still calls me into service. In the middle of this parable, there is a hint and a glimmer of the good news. It's really small, but this is where I hung my hope this week. Now, according to the people listening to Jesus's parable, the people said that the owner had every right to kill the tenants. But what does the owner do the third time around? Who does he send? His son. His son. Like a parent who so deeply yearns to be in relationship with their children, to turn their wayward lost children back onto a way of life that he's willing to do anything. You know, that's the story of God and our relationship with God throughout time, right? That's our story as humanity. It's a story woven throughout scripture, time and time again, as humanity turned our backs on God, God never turned God's back on us. God never gave up. Think about through scripture, God sent the judges, God sent the prophets. And when none of those things worked in the fullness of time, who did God send church in our midst? Jesus, his son, the word of God made flesh who came to live and dwell among us to show what it means to be human, to live as this child of God. And even when we as humanity nailed Jesus to a cross, rejecting God's vision for our world, church, did God give up on us? Oh, we need a better resounding go. Did, church, did God ever give up on us? No, because in three days, God, through the Holy Spirit, raised Jesus from the dead to show us that God's life and God's love win. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, not even death itself. God loves us with a love that not even death itself can destroy. God will never give up. God will never quit. And our God is a generous God, willing to pour out and give and share anything and everything, all of God's life and love, to share that with you and with me and the world so that all of us as humanity can be united together as one. And so on those days when I don't feel very generous, I don't feel very caring, I don't feel very loving, and I don't feel very serving. I'm reminded that I am loved abundantly and extravagantly by a God who generously pours it all out for all people. And I don't know about you, but that makes me have the courage to try again and try again and try again. The church, how are you doing at tending the vineyard? And more importantly, how are you at sharing the bounty and the yield and the produce that God has given you? How are you doing at sharing your time and your talents and your treasure? That's your homework for this week. Can I leave you some homework to do? You didn't get homework last week, so I should actually give you double the homework, but I'll be nice. I'll be nice this time. I just want you to think about that question. And oftentimes, yes, I understand we're in stewardship season and our mind, yes, should go to our financial resources. But I also want you to think about how are you doing at sharing your time and how are you also doing at sharing your gifts? And I want you to think about the vineyard as this. Did you know the vineyard is your home? Did you know the vineyard is where you work? Did you know the vineyard is in your classroom? Did you know the vineyard is at the grocery store? The vineyard is anywhere and everywhere we find ourselves opportunities to be God's love and life for all people. So my prayer for us as a community of faith is that God will continue to stir up our generous, loving, and serving hearts and minds and spirits. And as always, unite us together as one as the living body of Christ sent out into the world so that all people may have life and have life abundantly. Amen. Our song of the day in your red hymnal is number 342. 342. There in God's garden. We'll sing verses 1 through 4. Please stand. Please stand as you're able.
Its name is Jesus, name that says our Savior. There on its branches, see the scars of suffering. See there the tendrils of our human servant. has choked it, yet look it lives, its grief has not destroyed it, nor far consumed it. See how its branches reach to us in welcome. What the voice says, come to ye, be weary. Give me your sickness, give me all your sorrow, I will give blessing. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Each prayer concludes with merciful God, and the congregation responds, receive our prayer. You may kneel or be seated. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout the world that together we press on toward the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with an abundant harvest of good fruit. Merciful God, God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities, that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion, merciful God. God of all compassion, in Christ you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, and all in any need. Especially, we ask for prayers for the people of Israel. Merciful God, God of all steadfastness, you set Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of the church. 
Build up this congregation as living stones that it stands in the community as a witness to your enduring faith and love, merciful God. On this Clergy Appreciation Sunday, we are thankful for the ministry and leadership of Pastor Laura. Merciful God, God of all hope, the saints who came before us and lived and died with their hearts fixed on you, we give you thanks for their faithful witness and we wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. Merciful God. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ to be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Together, let us pray the offering prayer. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. You may be seated. Our God is extravagantly generous, withholding nothing from God's children. And this is God's table, and it is God who sends forth an invitation to all people to come, eat, and live. So here, all people are welcome. You don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to be a member. Everyone is welcome and invited to this table as we are fed and nourished with the very body and blood of Christ united as one and sent forth to share these gifts that we have first received. Everyone is welcome to the table for the gifts of God are free. First, I'll invite those who are worshiping online with us today to commune wherever you might find yourself to be with some bread and some wine or some grape juice. And together we will take the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you, amen. And now with the wine or the grape juice, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And now for those gathered here in this space, we'll continue to commune by receiving it around the rail. Please follow the direction of our ushers. While you are here, you're invited to either stand or kneel, whatever is most comfortable. And if you need communion brought out to you, please let us know. Come now to the table for all is ready. During communion, we'll sing, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. It's printed on page eight of your worship folder. Sad. 
Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand for our blessing. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. I'll invite you to be seated for our next temple talk this morning, and our special guest is Emmy Blomster from Hope House. I'm going to grab the microphone here so they can, she can speak from the front. Um, but during this Seeds of Faith Stewardship campaign, if you'll remember, we have three stewardship initiatives. And so Hope House is our second stewardship initiative where we want to continue to support and encourage our partners at Hope House. So I'm gonna turn things over to Emmy. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. It's such a joy to come talk about Hope House. Um, for those of you that don't know, Hope House is a nonprofit and we serve parenting teen moms. Our entire mission is um, to help empower our teen moms to reach self-sufficiency. So we're focusing on personal self-sufficiency and economic self-sufficiency. So economic self-sufficiency, to dive a little deeper, would be uh, focusing on education, helping them find affordable housing. Um, we're also helping them with any le legal troubles, helping them with that. We're helping them find tutors so that they can continue their education. Um, under personal self-sufficiency, we're going to be focusing on classes like parenting. That is a huge one. A lot of our moms may not have seen what healthy parenting looks like, um, so that is so great. We have a full-time parenting educator that works with our moms one-on-one -on -one so that they can create um, an, an effective parenting plan. They're also, uh, we're also doing classes on healthy relationships, boundaries, self-care, so many important skills that we can help them with education and finances and all of those things, but if they don't know how to communicate effectively, then they're really not gonna be successful in the workforce if they can't communicate with their employers, with their, their coworkers, anything like that. So the takeaway from that is just that it's a well-rounded approach to self-sufficiency, and we're really trying to serve the moms as a whole. So we're located not too far from here, off 64th and Sheridan, and last year we served 227 teen moms. So we have teen moms coming from all over the Denver metro area to use our resources. Um, so that's a lot of a lot of programs that I just mentioned, but on top of that, we're also just a place to belong. A lot of our moms, um, when they became pregnant, their friendships drastically changed and they can feel alone. And so Hope House is just a place where they can come um, and build relationships with staff, with, with volunteers, with, with other moms, um, and is really truly just, just a place to belong. Um, this right here, this is Kate Joy. We love celebrating our moms, and I love being able to tell just the amazing stories um, about our moms because they are so inspiring. So this is Kate Joy and her son, Anthony, and she came to us, um, and she was homeless at the time, and she stayed in our residential program, and now, um, and she participated in a lot of different classes, our, our college, college and career, self-care, parenting, financial literacy, healthy relationships. So she participated in all of those classes and now she has her own apartment. Um, and she also, um, her dream was to become a car mechanic and she is doing that and, and uh, is doing such a great job with that. And her son, Anthony, is doing really well also. Um, so Lisa has been volunteering. Lisa and Diane have been volunteering for over a year at Hope House and they've been volunteering in our early learning program. So helping with our kids and that is huge because we wanna make sure that the kids aren't falling behind, that they're on track um, and ready to start school. So Lisa, if you wouldn't mind just sharing a few things. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I, so Hope House is something that's, that has become very near and dear to our, our hearts. Um, I think something that really drew us to uh, Hope House is that it's faith-based. So I feel like faith and, and just love is, is embedded in everything they do at Hope House. And we've really seen firsthand the impact that Hope House has had on these, these moms and their kids and their families. So um, just a wonderful organization. 
Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the Loft Hope House. Uh, today is Clergy Appreciation Sunday. And so Pastor Laura, hey, I'm stay in up there. Spot. All right, I won't move, I promise. Don't, don't move. <laughs> I am told that things are happening. Things are happening. Okay, I can deal with a surprise, sorry. Things are happening. I don't know what the surprise is. I don't know, I'm, but I'm, I'm just, just gonna stay I'm here. just told to keep you there. I have to stay here, all right. Yes, whoever's in charge. Okay. <laughs> Okay, hey, good morning. Um, Charles Hedinger, who is our president of council, and Jill Johnson, our vice president, would not, could not be with us today to do this presentation. So they called in the D team, me. So I have some words that uh, were written by Jill to share with you about Pastor Laura on Clergy Appreciation Day. In recognition of Clergy Appreciation Sunday, we would like to honor and thank Pastor Laura for her unfailing commitment to the leadership and to us of King of Glory. A reading from 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 9. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God for your generosity to them and all believers will prove that we are obedient to the good news of Christ, and they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace you have given. In the past two years, Pastor Lore worked hard to know the congregants and every evolving needs. She has seen importance of faith formation for all ages, providing a solid faith foundation to be the light of our world. She has implemented safety measures for our building staff and members, so our environment is safe and inviting. She has railed number of groups for varieties of activities and projects, much needed repairs and improvements, both cost and work efficiencies. She's helped us with our rebranding and our updated website so we can reach a wider audience to share God's message. She sends us with homework each Sunday so we can go forth in contemplation and wondering, curiosity and deep sense of faith-based knowledge, the purpose as we navigate the hardships of life. Pastor Laura, you are incredibly organized and dedicated to the life of this church, its ministries, and the people and our needs. You bring us joy and smiles and energy and your relentless, beautiful, energizing sons, which we think that is really a great gift. You help us to be a thriving and growing community we appreciate the countless ways you live out the mission of God, of King of Glory, to be hands, voice, and face of God to one another in the world. From Numbers chapter 6, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you grace. We would like to offer this basket of thanks from the congregation to your dedication to us. And a note at closing. Finally, may we support and bless you in all the ways and support and that you support and bless us so that we may have life and have life more abundantly. Thank you. And to that, I will say thank you. Because just as I am, I'm humbled, I want to like hide under something. 
you all are a blessing in my life. And before I came to you, I had a lot of questions about call and if I was called to this ministry. And I want to let you know that you have reinvigorated each and every single day my call to ministry. And my hope for you is that you find that thing that God is calling you to do and to be in the world. The thing that God needs you to be. You, God needs you. And so I hope that out of my call, you feel your call as well. We are called to all kinds of things, church. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, neighbor, friend, lawyer, doctor, dentist, teacher, whatever. I hope that you feel invigorated and blessed in your call as you have been a blessing in my life. Each and every single day, I give thanks to God for you. Y'all are the best. I hit the pastor jackpot. I don't know how that happened. Okay, I, I hit the jackpot. Y'all are the best. Sorry, I got to throw in some y'alls in there. You are always in my prayers. You are a blessing in my life and in the life of my husband and our kiddos. And so thank you for the ways that you inspire me and the many ways that I see God at work in and through you for the sake of the life of the world. Keep up the good work, church. The world needs us time and time again. Y'all are the best, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. And with that, Mike, I'm gonna hand it, pass it off to you. Y'all should stay standing because we got a, a little singing to do. Hymn number 724, 724 in your red hymnal, All Who Love and Serve Your City. Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.